6.2 part 2 adding and subtracting rational expressions the real deal this time because we are going to have to get our own good old common denominators so the steps for finding these common denominators we talked about in the last uh, video or in the day before this and so remember you want to write your denominator as a list of its factors then the least common denominator will contain the factors of each and what we do is we multiply each fraction by what it takes to complete the denominator. Let's give this a try. Really those steps like that are more helpful kind of once you've seen it, I feel like, to remind yourself what's going on. But if you just have the steps there and you haven't seen a problem, it's not quite so helpful. So example one here. The first thing we need to do is we need to figure out what our common denominator is going to be. And so I have 4x squared and x. And so if I think about uh, 4x squared broken up into its parts. 4 is 2 times 2, so it'd be 2 times 2 times x times x. Okay, so x doesn't need to be broken down because it doesn't have anything simpler that we can make it. So if we write out what our common denominator needs to be, I'll write it down here. We need 2 times 2, we need x times x, but because our first denominator already has an x, and this just has an x, that's actually our common denominator. So, what we want to do now is figure out, well, if 4x squared is our common denominator, how do I get each fraction to have a 4x squared on bottom? Well, our first fraction already has a 4x squared on bottom, so we leave it alone. For our second fraction to get a 4x squared on the bottom, we're going to have to multiply the bottom of the fraction by what it takes to get 4x squared. We don't have a 4, so we need to multiply by 4. And to get an x squared, we need to multiply by x. But the way this works is you're not allowed to just multiply willy-nilly in math. You have to, if you do it to the bottom, you do it to the top as well. Because if we multiply by 4x over 4x, that's really like, um, it's really like multiplying by 1 because those would cancel out. So up here we still have this 5 over 4x squared. But now we're saying this is going to be 2 times 4x, which is 8x, over x times 4x, which is 4x squared. Now that we have a common denominator, we just basically put the numerators together so that we have 5 plus 8x over 4x squared. And we check to see, is it factorable? And if it is, then we factor and see if we can simplify. If it's not, like 5 and 8 don't have anything in common. They don't both have x's. They're, you can't square root or anything. So that means that this is, our, this is our best answer right here. On example 2, I actually think it gets easier when you have these like that are x minus 1 and x plus 5 because our common denominator we can guarantee is going to be x minus 1, x plus 5, whatever these denominators are separately, if they just have like one factor each, it comes together and that's our, our common denominator. So this first fraction needs an x plus 5, because it already has an x minus 1, it needs an x plus 5 and so we times it to the top and the bottom. Then the second fraction has an x plus 5, so we need to multiply it by x minus 1. Okay, so that means that we're going to end up having to distribute here. Um, because they both have the same denominator, they're written in different orders, but that's okay because multiplication can be done in any order. We can go ahead though and we can combine these into one fraction with the same denominator. And then at the same time, let's distribute. This is 6 times x, which is 6x. 6, 6 times 5, which is 30 plus 7 times x, which is 7x, 7 times negative 1, which is negative 7. Now we want to combine like terms up here at the top. So 
that gives us 6x plus 7x, which is 13x. 30 minus 7 is 23. And it's still over that denominator. We don't ever want to multiply the, our denominators together, like foil them out, because um, anything we would want to use this function for, it would be better for it to be factored like this. So don't multiply this out. And then 13x plus 23, we can't factor because they don't have anything in common. So that means that this is my final answer. So all, all we're doing here is just some a variety of problems having to do with getting common denominators and seeing what kind of things they can do to trip us up. And really from here on out, it's probably going to be a factoring issue. Like here, to get our common denominator, first we need to figure out what this is factored. So to multiply to get negative 2, which will subtract to give us 1, we need plus 2 minus 1. Right here for the second one, we need to multiply to get 3 and add to get negative 4. So that's minus 3 minus 1. And so then we look at our two denominators here and we say, well, they have this in common. So we definitely need an x minus 1. But it has to have everything from both fractions. So that means we also would have x plus 2 and x minus 3. So this right here is our... our our least common denominator, or LCD. So we can actually um, save ourselves some room here maybe. This fraction has x plus 2 and x minus 1. It's missing the x minus 3. So we're going to times the top and the bottom by x minus 3. Okay, on the second fraction it has x minus 3 and x minus 1. It's missing the x plus 2. So we times the top and the bottom by x plus 2. Now they have the same thing on the bottom. And it, they're in different order the way I have them written now, but that's OK. You can write them in any order that you want. Just don't actually ch accidentally change what they are. And then on top here, we have to distribute. Now, notice this is a plus, which means whenever I distribute here, I'm going to distribute a plus 2. When we subtract, and there's a subtraction sign in the middle, we would put a minus there and distribute a negative with what we're, whatever we're doing. So if I distribute the 3x, I get 3x squared minus 9x. And then I distribute here the 2, so that's plus 2x plus 4. Then I combine like terms. on the top here. 3x squared doesn't have a like term, but negative 9x plus 2x does. It's negative 7x plus 4. Now these can really be frustrating sometimes because here I really need to factor the top here to see if anything would cancel out with the bottom, and this is a um, slide and divide situation, okay, because of that 3 in front. So I'm just going to do the factoring part up here real quick uh, without it being on top of the fraction because I don't want to have to keep rewriting the denominator. If we slide the 3 over, that's x squared minus 7x plus 12. We factor this by saying what it multiplies to get 12, that adds to get negative 7. So x minus 3, x minus 4. Then we divide by what we slid, which was that 3 simplify if possible x minus 1 if you can't simplify you move the bottom number in front of x so that's 3x minus 4 so on top here instead of 3x squared minus 7x plus 4 we need to have x minus 1 times 3x minus 4 over x plus 2 times x minus 1 times x minus 3 and because we factored now, we can see that something does, in fact, cancel out. So it makes that all worth it. That's kind of a matter of opinion, I guess. But now that we've got that canceled out, this is our best answer because we can't factor anymore and there's nothing to cancel out. So that was kind of a rough one.
Good thing we did it together. Example 4 here. Uh, on the bottom, to get our common denominator, let's factor x squared minus 36, since it's a minus sign. I can take both the square root of both of these. This is the difference of two squares, which we factor into x plus 6, x minus 6. So our denominator needs x plus 6 and x minus 6 from the first fraction. It needs x plus 6 from the second fraction. So we really just need to sit here and multiply the second fraction by x minus 6 on the top and the bottom because that's what it needs so that these will have a common denominator. Now remember that I mentioned this negative has to come up here basically with what's going on right there. So this is going to equal 7x minus and then we need to foil 2x minus 3 times x minus 6. So in parentheses we're going to put that because we still have that negative basically like a negative 1 that we need to go ahead and, and distribute through, but I don't want to do too much at once. So FOIL, 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times negative 6 is negative 12x. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. Negative 3 times negative 6 is plus 18 over our common denominator of x plus 6, x minus 6. Now there's two things on top we need to do. We need to add like terms and we need to distribute this negative one. Uh, so, and that 7x actually also is going to be a like term here in a second, but if we distribute the negative, we get negative 2x squared. I'm going to go ahead and say negative 12x plus a negative 3x is negative 15x. And then if I distribute the negative, that makes it a positive 15x. Distribute the negative to the positive 18 and get negative 18. And then one more, one more thing here. We've got one more set of like terms. So that 7x plus 15x is 22x. I'm going to write it in standard form. So I'm going to put negative 2x squared plus 22x minus 18 over x plus 6, x minus 6. And then technically we need to check and see if it's factorable on top. To do that we'd kind of start a slide and divide situation and say um, x squared plus 22x. We're sliding the negative 2 so that we get 36. Try to think of anything that multiplies to get 36 that will add to get 22. And doesn't look like it. 2 and 18 were close, but now we're going to start getting farther and farther away. So can't factor the top, which means that this is our answer. Our last set of examples, five and six. A little bit different, but maybe maybe not necessarily harder. Well, I guess just have to see together. Here on the bottom, let's factor this um, and say that uh, what multiplies to get 18, the adds to get nine. So x plus six, x plus three. Um, and then keep in mind that our common denominator is x plus 6 times x plus 3, so we need to multiply this fraction by x plus 3. On the top and the bottom, this negative means that we're going to multiply a negative 1 through all of that. Now, this on the top here on the left doesn't really factor, uh, because we could kind of factor it if we put square roots in it, but that's just silly. But I just want to throw out there, it's not really helpful to factor the numerators we want to try to add like terms if possible and then factor. We, we have to factor the denominators initially, but don't try to right off the bat factor the numerator. Not going to be helpful. So we have x squared minus 6 minus, and then this right here that we're going to have to foil all over x plus 6 times x plus 3. Well, 
we need to FOIL and distribute. So the x squared minus 6 just gets to hang out. x times x is x squared. x times 3 is 3x. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. And so we need to distribute and add like terms. So that's minus x squared. If we go ahead and add these two together, that's negative x, but we're distributing a negative, so that makes it positive x. And negative, negative 12 is positive 12. Uh, the x squareds cancel, and we're left with, oh, look at that. We're left with x plus 6 on top, and we have x plus 6 on bottom. Isn't that neat? So cancel out your x plus 6s, which leaves you with a 1 on top. That should be 1 over x plus 3. And last, perform the indicated operation. I don't think this one is actually any tougher. It's just... What do we do if there's just a if they're not both fractions? Well, we can make anything a fraction by putting it over one. So our common denominator here is this denominator that we have x minus three because we can take four and we can times it by x minus three on the top and the bottom, and that will give us our common denominator of x minus three. So if we do that. Then on top, if we distribute the 4, we have 4x minus 12 plus 1 from the second fraction over our common denominator of x minus 3. So this gives us, if we add like terms, 4x minus 11 over x minus 3. That right there would be our answer. And that's, that's adding fractions where you have to get your own common denominators.